Hello. Hello and welcome to this uh, weekly appointment and to this weekly webinar lessons, let's call it. Uh, I don't know yet which is the proper word. Uh, this is a moment where we share, we give inputs to you to work and to reflect. So, welcome back. This week uh, we work with the topic of time. We started last week with the topic of space and this week we pass to the topic of time. We already share at uh, the beginning of the week the mission and I just see the notification and Ella did it and share it with us. So great job, thank you very much. I also uh, start to... I did it today and actually I spent the whole morning without watching the clock. I'm gonna share my reflection in the on the comment below the mission. So sometimes I'm gonna look down because I have my notes here so to remember what is happening now. So time. Uh, there are so many things to say about time and so many concepts and working with also philosophy, philosophical approaches to time and what I want to start to share with you is the approach that I want to use that um, there is no time management. Well, uh, there are a lot of different techniques to work, uh, to the, decide which task to do, when and how, and we are not going to work with that today. We are going to discuss, I'm going to share with you my thoughts, my idea with the fact that there is no time management and this means that we cannot manage the time. Time will go, time it keep going, doesn't matter if we want or not, time will pass. And what I would like to share with you is that I like to call the approach as a self-management. Because we can decide how to react to certain things and how to manage ourselves, not the time. And uh, this self-management is not a logical approach, is not a logical um, uh, decision on how to choose, how to spend time in a logical way, but is um, is an emo um, emotional approach, is an emotional way to manage ourselves according to the time. So to recap, there is no time management because we cannot manage the time, but there is self-management and is not in a logical level, but is an emotional level. And why I take this approach? It's because most of the time, personally, and also with people that I work with and I spend my time with, um, it's come up the topic of guilt of waiting time, wasting time. So this word, this concept of guilt and being guilty, it's showing that is not logical but is emotional. So the first uh, topic that we would like to discuss with you today is um, to work on what is uh, that is eating our time. What does it mean? Because the time is not uh, is cannot be manageable, but it's keep going. But there are certain activities that it's eating our emotional energy according to how we spend time. So in order to work with this, I um, usually use a specific uh, approach, a specific sentence. Then whenever I find myself uh, in this state, in this guilt state, I ask to myself, is this activity relevant for me? And the specific question, can I eliminate this? So I would like that you uh, write down um, this sentence, can I elim eliminate this? And uh, this is the first step to um, give the emotional permission, the emotional permission not to feel guilty in saying not to something. So the first uh, way to start to work on emotional level on the time is to ask ourselves if we can eliminate certain tasks. 
And the first um, input they would like to give you is to sit down, take a paper, and write down the activities that you do and you feel guilty in doing it. Or the activity that you don't do and you feel guilty in not doing it. And close to this activity, you write, can I eliminate this? It's not rational, it's not logical, but it's emotional. So this is it's giving a first idea of what is that it's tiring us in a level of emotion. And I call this the mm, monsters of time and emotions. After that, it starts to have a clear image of what is more important. I do it when I have to plan something, when I see my day, when I think that I start to feel this um, like a hamster in a wheel that I'm juggling with the time, this is for me is a signal. So I ask myself, can I eliminate this? And I do regularly, I write down on a paper and I ask myself, can I eliminate this? And after that, to start to switch from what is a guilt, what is like negative emotions to what is a positive emotion, I do one activity that is called the timeline. The timeline is uh, um, connect both with the past and with the future. So the first exercise is called lifeline and it's connected with the past. Is uh, we, I divide the paper in two, so I make a line that switch in the middle and I leave the upper part for my professional, educational, school life and the down part for my personal life. I choose two different markers and I start the left side of the paper is the beginning to the right is the moment of now. I start drawing how do I feel satisfied. It's, uh, there is no certain rules, it's up to us in both levels, in a personal life and in the, in the work slash uh, educational slash professional life. And I choose two specific different colors. The upper part and the down part and drawing. I can draw and I, I suggest you to draw whatever pass in your mind. This is a way to reflect. Then I switch and I take the other color and I draw when I don't feel satisfied. Starting from the beginning till the end of the paper, right of the paper is the now. I repeat it again to explain a bit more. So paper, like this is the paper. I start from one side to the other one, from the beginning of my life till now. I divide the paper in two and I draw with two different colors. The upper part of the paper is a professional life slash educational. The down part is the personal life. With the first color, I draw according to the memories in the life, what is connect with satisfaction, with good memories, with emotional satisfaction. With the other color, I draw what is connect with unsatisfaction, with down moments. This is a way to have it in front of me. And when I finish to draw both, what I do, I check what are the interferences, what is the moment that is connecting. To recap to my mind, what is the specific moment? I call those moments the flow moment. And the flow is a, a moment when um, what is doing, what is happening, is uh, not relevant in how much time it takes. So the second part of this exercise is to come up with uh, the memory of the moment that we remember, that we don't remember anymore what was the time. So what I ask is to close the eyes and to recover that specific moment, so-called flow, just a second, where uh, there is not anymore the concept of what is happening in how much time. 
for example, a flow moment, it happens, it connects a lot, for example, for who is doing a lot of sport activities and it's going the state that is not matter any more how it, much time it takes, but it's matter only what is the activity happening. This state, this specific flow state is connect with the emotional part when it's not any more relevant how much time it takes to do something, but it's more relevant what is the feeling. <laughs> and I, uh, I feel a bit like my first online lesson, I feel a bit <laughs> stressed. So in these flow moments, we forget, we don't remember anymore that we have a deadline. And this is the moment what we recognize ourselves that we don't recognize anymore ourselves. And what I uh, do is uh, when I feel that switching moment, when I lo look back on my lifeline and I feel that it was a moment that was not satisfaction and past two, I go back to that moment and I build it back to visualize it. Why I do this for the past is to be aware that uh, the moment that I am now is not uh, something that is bad or good. It's something that is connect with all what I passed through my past, all what happened in the past that drives me now. And it's connect with uh, working with the fact and with awareness that the state that I can reach in each moment, it can serve me in whatever moment and this is I do it when I find myself uh, as I mentioned before in this juggling uh, in this hamsel in a wheel that I lose the time that I am guilty that I'm not doing it I stop I look I correct and I take take action and this stop look is looking the past drawing the line seeing that Things happen, but things changed and change in sp specific moments. And after that, what I do is I look also in the future and I switch this perspective of efficiency. And the suggestion is to switch the perspective of e efficiency to significance, to what is significant for me. I ask myself the question after asking to myself, can I eliminate this? What can I do today that make a better tomorrow for myself in order to work on not what is taking back the time, not how can I manage my time? How can I use more techniques? There are so many logical techniques, but how can I work on the emotional levels to have again the flow moment? So I ask to myself, what can I do today that can make a better tomorrow? But in order to be aware also about the tomorrow, the distance, the long run, I make a second timeline. And this is a second suggestion to make a, a timeline for the future. So this time take the paper and draw a long line in the middle. And this is the beginning and this is the expectancy of life that you have. Google, check on Google how much is for your country. For example, for males in Italy, it's 82 years. So I drop zero and 82 at the end. And then I check and I put in the middle, in the point where I am now. For example, for me it's 30, it should be like this. So I can look on how much it passed and how much do I have left. And this is giving me an awareness of, okay, this is there, but this is still there. And after that, under this line, I make other three lines. One line is about how much time do I spend sleeping? So I calculate, I usually sleep eight hours. I multiply per 368 days per the years. So I have a calculation of how much time I sleep. And I remove this from the time it is left. So I have a smaller part. 
And then I decide, okay, which activity it's relevant for me that I want to have there. And I write it down to visualize it. When I have this visualized it down, I decide what is today the most important task to do in order to have a better tomorrow. And I do this uh, making the line of life to have a bigger picture, to have a clear vision. I start from a reality check, what is called a reality check, with uh, what is the past, what happened in the past, where were the crucial moments, what is the present, what I want for the future, and I make my vision, I write down my vision. And then after that, I write down what is the most important thing that I can do today that makes a better tomorrow. I want also to share, I'm not doing this every single day. I'm not doing these two questions, can I eliminate this task and this what can I do today that makes a better tomorrow. I don't do it every single moment, I don't do it every single day. I don't do the line life every day. I do it when I recognize myself in this juggling state that I'm losing, I perceive that I lose the control of my time, but I am not in control of the time. But I have this feeling. So in order to be aware of, okay, time pass, it's past and will pass. And it's not logical step, but it's emotional. I take a step back to have this reality check, to look what is now, what was there and what is there and what is the vision for the future. And I ask myself those questions. And those are the three steps. So look what is hitting my time, what is taking out, asking to myself if I, if I can eliminate this. And asking it to myself, this is to ask myself the emotional permission not to feel guilty, to do, to say no to certain activities. Because saying yes all the time, when I say yes to an activity, I automatically say no, no to a lot of other activities. But when I say no to something that is not working for me, I allow myself to say yes to something else that is more important. Then the, I draw the line line, the past, with uh, professional and personal separated, so you can see it. And I draw with a color the level of satisfactions, and then with another color the level of unsatisfaction. And when I see that they cross, I ask myself, what was the moment there? It was a flow moment, and I visualize if it was a flow moment. And also visualize my flow moment. The flow moment is that moment where I am so into what I'm doing that I don't have anymore the concept of time. Some people do it by playing music, some people do it by doing sports, some people do by doing the TV that they really like. Then after that I draw also the future line to visualize how much time is left. Yes, I write down, I do also, I add time sleeping, I can add also if I have other things, I can add time eating, time uh, doing certain specific activities, and I also consider active energy that I have in life, I write out the vision. Okay, what is the vision that I want to have? And then I ask myself, what can I do today that can make better tomorrow connect to that vision? So those are the steps to take back the control of the emotional, the self-management of the time, not the time management. The self-manager, how do I choose to use my time? <laughs> so, thank you very much. Uh, feel free to comment here to ask questions. I, I am aware that was a bit messy. And in the middle of the session, I lost a bit my focus and the emotions inside me come up a bit. I hope you perceive the message that I wanted to give with this um, working on the emotional level of time and not in management. Not, uh, I didn't want to give um, activity with uh, um, switching tasks, with talking about interactions, talking about efficiency, talking about uh, prioritizing, talking about uh, um, what is more, um, what is more um, in a logical level, but in uh, emotional. And um, 
What I want to close this is uh, with a small meditation that is some, something that helps me a lot to go back in the emotional to go back in the emotional level thinking about time. So I ask you e, to sit or if you're already sitting or to take a comfortable position to close your eyes. Breathe in and let it out. Breathe in and let it out. And bring back to your mind The last moment where you had no idea of what was happening around you. The last moment where you were so focused on the activities that you were doing that you didn't care about the time. that you didn't care about the place that you were. You were totally in what you were doing. Maybe you were dancing. Maybe you were playing guitar. Or you were reading a book. Or maybe you were talking with a friend. Bring back that memory. Feel the sounds that you have around you in that moment. And the motions inside you. Stay with those feelings and put a hand on the place of your body when you feel those feelings. In that moment where time was not relevant for you. but only the emotions. Breathe in and let it out. And one more time, breathe in and let it out. Keeping that moment with you, be aware that it's part of you, that the ability to go in that state is part of you, to go in your flow state. And every time that you will feel stressed about the time passing or guilty because of the activity that you're doing or you're not doing, you can go back to that flow state and flow memory that you have inside you. 
and think about time as emotional part of you not trying to controlling with logical way thoughts and tools breathe in and let it out and slowly connect back with your legs connect back with your arms with your hands with your shoulders with your neck with your chest with your full body with your own time with your own tempo open your eyes come back here and thank you very much thank you very much for uh, watching this uh, live talking about time emotions self-management i hope that was supportive and it will be supportive for who will watch it after the live and uh, see you friday with the reflection and with the guest of this week bye bye